today I'm going to be showing you how to make these little shabby chic chairs and um, yeah they're super easy <laughs> uh, you have to start with these little paper mache boxes from Hobby Lobby and um, they're really cheap they're like 99 cents so uh, yeah those are some of the things you're gonna need obviously glue the normal miniature stuff um, hello Sarah Good to see you. Thanks for joining the stream. I didn't really introduce myself. My name is Aira, and this is my channel, uh, Bentley House. And it was Bentley House Productions was the name of my channel, but um, some of you might have noticed I changed it to Bentley House Minis. And the reason for that, uh, Bentley House Productions was um, kind of over because I did art and photography, but my channel has really turned more into miniatures so now I've changed it to Bentley House Mini so people who are looking for my channel um, will know that yes it is a miniatures channel. I may still sneak some art in there every now and then but uh, for the most part I'll be showing you miniatures. So um, I guess it's 10 o'clock so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I hope you guys had an amazing Halloween. I for one am exhausted Two little ones dressing up is um, a lot of work, <laughs> especially when they're very specific on their outfits. I had a Lightning McQueen and a Pinkie Pie, and my son brought me his little ma his little Matchbox car and was telling me, you know, the specifics of what he needed. And I've been doing Halloween costumes all week long, so I'm exhausted. But we had a fun night, even though it was rainy. Anyway, so I'm trying to be upbeat energy this morning. I was like pumping myself up. So hopefully I can stick through, be exciting for you <laughs> for a couple hours without just passing out from Halloween exhaustion. But I hope you guys had a good Halloween too. Let me know what you did. Did you dress up? Um, did you work on a haunted house? Um, I recently did like a little miniatures video on a posable skeleton and that was really fun to do. Kind of got me in the Halloween spirit. But anyway, today is November, so I'm not doing like a little like Halloween thing. Um, I'm going to show you how to make these shabby chic chairs. And um, I'm going to let, if you're on here, um, I'm going to let you vote. This one will make like a little bench, like a longer bench. And this one will make a chair. So if you have an opinion on whether you want to see me make a chair or a bench, they're pretty much the same um the same steps so I'll be showing you the same process is just one is longer and one is shorter so let me know if you have an opinion on that um, this one looks a little beat up but the actual bottom part is okay these are I think I told you they're like 99 cents at Hobby Lobby so whenever I'm there I like grab a few of these and um, you can use them for all sorts of things <laughs> not just miniatures so I'll give you a couple seconds to vote on that if you want to see a bench or a chair. If nobody votes in the next minute or so, I'll just choose. And I might do a bench because we have a couple chairs here already. So I don't see any voting. Um, first thing you want to make sure that you have is an X-Acto knife. Um, obviously, if you're a miniaturist you probably have one of these laying around I also use a box cutter occasionally um, just because it's easier to hold on to and my hand doesn't hurt after using it so much um, so I put a new blade in here that's pretty important good morning Koki 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 <laughs> that's a fun name if I'm saying that wrong let me know um, so yeah I'm gonna use an exacto knife and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut open this opening here. And I'm not going to cut all the way, um, like, what is it, 180? I'm not going to cut the full 180 degrees off of this circle. I'm going to leave it um, a little bit so there's kind of like an arms, like an arm holder <laughs> thing. Um, so today is just going to be me making up words because my brain is completely gone. So, um, okay, I saw one vote for bench. So we're going with bench. So same as the chair, 
I'm not going to cut it all the way at the sides. I'm going to go a little bit in. Am I showing that correctly? I'm going to go a little, so I'm not cutting it here. I'm going to go a little bit in and I'm going to try my best to make it even. I'm going to start by just making like a simple mark where I think I want it. And here, okay. And then I'm just going to cut straight down to the best of my ability. And the nice thing about doing shabby chic stuff is that um, if, if it's a little bit off and it's not perfect, that's okay because the paint job's not going to be perfect. It's going to look worn. So, all right, so I'm just going to cut straight down, not all the way to the bottom. And that's because I want to keep a lip here. And the reason for that is that it's going to kind of hide some of my, when I make the cushion, it's going to kind of hide some of those lines underneath. So I'm going to push this down. All right, so I've cut down to about here. It's not quite even. Let me push one more time down on here. Okay, so do you see how I've left like this little lip? I'm going to cut straight across here, and this is going to be the opening for my bench. So I'm going to do that. And be careful. I've poked myself multiple times, but just a warning, be careful with these X-Acto knives um, because if you have your hand in here while you're cutting, obviously you can hurt yourself. So I have my opening cut here for the bench and you could probably even cut it a little bit wider. I think I will because, you know, if two people were sitting on here, their legs would be kind of scrunched together. So I'm going to cut it just a tiny bit wider and then we'll go to the next step. Does anyone have any miniature projects that they're working on that a bench like this would work in? You could, you don't have to make it shabby chic, really. You could uh, make it like old and like worn down looking. You could make it, you can make it a little bit more modern depending on the um, accessories that you put with it. Um, it's going to tend to look more shabby chic just because of the way that I do this. Um, but there's different things you could do with it. Okay, so I cut that a little bit wider, but still I didn't go all the way to the edge here. So the next part is what takes a little bit of time. Um, you're going to need a ruler and you can do this by eye if you'd like to. Sometimes I just eye things, um, but I am going to mar mark out half inch sections because what I'm going to end up trying to make it look like is that these pieces are individual pieces of wood that have been nailed together to create the back of this chair. And so to do that, I'm going to mark out those individual lines that should be um, the line in between the planks. So a pencil and a ruler will definitely help with that. And, and I'm not going to like be exact with this. I'm just going to try to eye it. Because it's round, it's not super easy to do. Can you all see what I'm doing? I'm just going to kind of wrap it around to the best of my ability. I'm sorry, it sounds like someone's mowing their lawn outside, but can't help that. Earlier, there were like nuts and squirrels and cats, I don't know, all over the roof. They were like having a party up there. It was really, really loud. I think we have like trees that have like huge nuts in them. <laughs> sounds weird. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going around. It must be my like immediate neighbor because that is really loud. I don't know if it's loud for you guys, but it's loud for me. I'm surprised my dog isn't barking at them. Okay, so I'm just going all the way around, marking half inch sections. And I'm not going to quite have, let's see. I'm going to quite hit it exactly. 
So I'm going to put a half inch section over here and then just kind of make it up. So I put a half inch mark here and here and I'm just going to kind of go in the middle. I want the half inch on the front to match because that's what you're going to see first. So I'm just going to kind of make it up and I'm going to have two smaller planks right here. Okay, so after I do that, I'm going to go around again and just make long marks to indicate my and if it's not quite round sometimes it can be difficult these little um, architectural scales are nice to use on rounded projects because uh, because they're like a triangle shape they kind of sit really nicely on the rounded surface and this line isn't perfectly straight so I might go back and fix that but if you don't mind it not being perfectly straight, then you can just kind of go with it. A lot of my miniatures are just me kind of going with it and doing the best I can. Good morning. Good morning, Mariah. Good to see you back again. We are making a shabby chic bench. And I'm trying to not be boring during this really boring part of drawing lines. So I'm just going to keep going around, draw those lines so I can mark out the boards. And if I'm ever off screen, please tell me. I try to put my setup so like a lot of times I do stuff like really close up and I just get closer and closer as I go through the project. So if you can't see what I'm doing, please tell me. Um, that happens a lot in my videos. I watch my videos. I'm like, you can't see what I'm doing at all. Fantastic. <laughs> Which is the opposite of the point I'm trying to make. Okay. So I'm going to redo this line real quick. That one was crooked. All the rest seem to be straight. And if you're into details, you can do them across this front part as well. Um, I'm just going to eye these because it's going to be really hard to hold the ruler on there. It's not too difficult to just kind of eye half inch boards going across. So I just kind of evenly space those out. So I'm going to give you a good shot of that. You've got lines going all the way across and these are marking out where our boards, where the center of center where two planks meet up, whatever this is, joint between the planks. That's what these lines are showing. Okay, so now we want to actually give some depth to these planks because um, if we paint over this, we're just going to paint over our line. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my X-Acto and carefully, without cutting myself, I'm going to score along these lines. I'm just going to score it lightly. I do not want to push it through the cardboard because then it would kind of destroy the integrity of our bench and it might get a little bit uh, broken. <laughs> so um, if you're just joining in, I was telling them early, I'm exhausted from Halloween. I'm exhausted from my kids. It's just, it's a lot of work. We had fun, but oh, I'm tired. Okay. So we're just going to score lightly. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, you can score lightly and I'm going to just go all the way down and just kind of roll my exacto at the bottom and I'm being careful of my fingers so I don't cut myself I did not dress up for Halloween I did not have time to dress up for Halloween I made a big paper mache car for my son who was Lightning McQueen and um, that took a lot of time. And then my daughter was Pinkie Pie, so I had to, I don't know if you guys know anything about My Little Pony, but I had to, um, what is it, sew her cutie mark onto her costume, and that took time, because I'm not like a big sewer, so it always takes me extra, probably longer than it would take anyone else. Usually if I do fabric, 
I um, use glue. Okay, sometimes it's hard to tell if I've scored them already because I just put a new blade in um, and a lot of times it's best to work with a new blade. Well, most of the time it's good to work with a new blade. And this one is being difficult. And keep going all the way around. Okay. Um, did anyone, this is just a poll for my own knowledge. Did anyone see when I put up the live event, did anyone see like the supplies list and did anyone like appreciate that or was that, was that helpful in any way? Um, I don't know, I just tried a new thing to put like the supplies down um, of what you might need. But let me know if that was helpful. Okay, and now I'm just gonna score these guys in the front like so. Oops, that one went through, but that's okay. It's just in the front. I'm not too worried about that. Just gotta not push as hard. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm i trying to figure out, it's so confusing when you try to set up a live stream. I'm sorry that you missed it. Um, trying to figure out the best way to get that information out. Uh, I may just have to do some more research. It seems like the easiest way for me to learn things right now is I just look up other YouTubers who have already figured it out. Okay, so I have scored every single one of these lines. And um, it's not if I painted over this, it still would not show up because the X-Acto knife um, cut is so thin. So I'm going to take this little poking tool and... Um, or you can use something like this. This looks kind of like a dental scraper thingy. Um, it came in like a clay, clay tool kit or something. Um, so I'm just gonna take this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape it down each one of those exacto lines. And this is going to widen that cut for me so that when I paint over it, you can actually see it um, in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Go like this, and it's going to widen that cut and make it much more obvious. Okay, but hopefully, because it's it's duller than the X-Acto knife, it should not cut through. And then you can also kind of go over the top. I kind of do it with my fingernails, which is why my nails are so messed up. Um, go over the top to make it look like these two planks are um, separate, because they would kind of be separated on the top a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to do that for each one. I'm just gonna scrape down that line just to make a definite difference between the two planks. And I might have to do that a couple times for each. I'll put this back down here. Let me know if you need to see something closer, if I'm not making sense. I've made these several, several times, and so it's just kind of me going through the motions. So if I skip something or don't say something correctly, <laughs> let me know. Um, I think these are still in my Etsy shop, these specific ones, because someone asked me to make them custom for them. So it was a custom listing for a long time, but they never purchased them. All the other ones I've made, I think, have sold because I was looking to see if I had a bench still in my um, in my inventory so I could show the bench to you, but I don't, so I guess I sold them all. Um, but these two chairs are still in my Etsy store. Okay, so then I'll go all the way down and across, and as you can see, it's you can really start to see the difference between the planks now and that's what we want. Keep going. And get these little guys in front. That one 
one's cut, so I'm going to leave that one alone. And there we go. All right, so thank you, Sarah. Um, this is basically our form that we need. So that is super easy just to kind of measure these out, um, score them, and then go over that. You know, you can get a bunch of these if you have like a big scene you're doing. <laughs> just like put on a movie and just score them and just sit there and, and get them done before you paint them. Um, another way that I've used these before is um, I've made these like little boxes. And this is, I mean, it just started out like this and it looks so different as you can see. And um, I just did the same scoring technique, um, except I scored a circle around the top and then made it look like planks of wood um, going along here. So these make really good um, things to put in the attic. Um, they can make like a really good shabby chic um, coffee table. You can put things in here. Um, so, and then I just scored down the side and made it look like a curved piece of wood that goes all the way around. So um, these can also be really, really cool tabletops. So you can put legs on the bottom and just make it look like a table. So they're very, very versatile. Um, they're fun to kind of come up with new ways to use them. So, but this is kind of the easiest way to score and cut them. Okay, so um, next thing I'm going to do is put the legs on and I have a little bit of a story for you because um, if you happen to be one of the people that found my supplies list, one of the supplies I listed was stair rail, I think they're called ballasts. They're the things that the long skinny things that go up the stair rail. And um, you can get them at Hobby Lobby in the dollhouse section. They're really, really good for making furniture legs. And that's what I used on here. And the reason they're so good is because they're turned and they have a, a really nice curvy design. Um, and so you can easily just cut them off to the size that you need and it looks like you have custom turned um, legs. Well, I put that in the description and I bought them, but I cannot find them anywhere. I know I can envision them in my Hobby Lobby shopping cart, but I don't know where they are. And I was looking for them and last week when I was making um, my miniature skeleton video, I don't know if you saw it, I could not find, I have this jar of miniature skeletons. I was about to accuse my sister of throwing them away because she said they were creepy. And while I was looking for the stair ballast, found my jar of skeletons. So I guess the next time I'm doing a video, I will maybe find the stair ballasts because I don't know where they went. So in place of that, using something a little bit uh, more boring is just these little wooden dowels. And I made them um, a tad shorter than on these guys. I always felt like these were just a little bit too tall. So I'm going to be using these. They are cut to an inch. And these are, let's see if it says, I think they're a 16th inch um, just wooden craft dowels like this. And so I just cut them to an inch and these are going to be the legs of the bench. Um, they'd be a lot prettier if I had found what I was going to use, but say la vie. Okay. So what I'm going to do in order to get these on here, um, I'm just going to mark where I want the chair things to go before I just start drilling into my project. So I'm going to need one up here and up here, back here, and back here. Um, that one's not quite in the right spot. Okay. I'm going to move that one over. So I do it in pencil first because if I just started drilling, I'd get them in the wrong spot and then I'd be mad. Keep adjusting till you like where they're at. Okay, so that's where I have them marked out. This is just the sticker that Hobby Live put on there, so I'm gonna paint over that. You won't even see it. 
So I'm going to drill through these with my 16th inch drill bit. And um, I'm not worried about drilling up into here because I'm going to be upholstering a pillow to put in there. So um, any ugly glue or anything like that will um, just kind of be covered by the pillow. So I'm not worried about that. All right. Sorry if it's loud. I'm going to turn the microphone. If I forget to turn it back, just let me know. If you do not have one of these little Dremel things, what I used to do before I had a drill is I would just hand drill, I'll just get like a little drill bit set and then you can hand drill these. It takes a long time and it hurts your hands, but that's a way to get around if you don't have one of these guys. But these do make it a little bit faster. This is a Dremel stylus. I don't think they make these anymore, but they also have like the regular Dremel that you can get. Okay, so now we've got our holes drilled in, and these should fit these guys. And it's okay if it's a little bit tight. We want it a little bit tight, although that seems very tight. That's okay. I'm just going to punch those guys through there, make sure that they fit, and then I'm going to glue them in place. And I recently learned a trick that um, if you combine uh, Aileen's tacky glue and super glue, it dries like almost instantly. So we're going to try that trick today so that I can get these legs on here dried and secure um, so we can move on with the project rather quickly. So I'm going to get a piece of paper. I really don't want it to glue onto my paint palette, so I'm going to get a piece of paper and get some tacky glue. And this is just regular, original, original recipe tacky glue. I'm going to get a glob of that and this is Loctite super glue. I'm going to put a glob of that. It looks like it's already globbed up a bit. Okay, so I can't remember if you have to do the tacky glue first or the super glue first. So we're just going to guess. I think, I think I've done it both ways and I think it works both ways. But we'll see. So I'm just going to do tacky glue and then super glue. And oops, kind of get most of it in there and then stick it in and kind of line it up with the top. Sorry, I was off camera. Line it up with the top of the bench. So you can kind of see it sticking through the hole right there. And here's it sticking out the bottom. Okay, just going to try and get any of that glue off the leg so that when I paint it doesn't really show up. Okay, we're going to do that again. Tacky glue, super glue, stick it through. Hey, the rhyme. Tacky glue, super glue, stick it through. Okay, line that guy up with the top of the bench. And I'm going to get super glue all over my fingers again. Awesome. That's okay. Okay, so now we've got two in, like so, and that's, like I said, going to be covered up with the cushion, so I'm not really super worried about that. Okay, we've got two more to go. Tacky glue, super glue, looks like my super glue is already kind of drying out, so I might have to do one more of those. Get the glue in, stick the leg through. Come on, leg. Okay. 
and stuck through. Get the extra glue off. This is why I don't have nice nails. Because <laughs> it's glue everywhere. That's okay. I'm afraid to go get my nails done because I'll just ruin them like the next day. Okay, is there any more? No, oh, I need some more super glue. Okay, we got a three-legged bench and he's already standing up. That's good. Okay, a little bit more super glue. All right, tacky glue. Grab the super glue. Get some of it in the hole. Get the chair leg in. Okay, now they're all four in. And I'm just going to sit it and make sure before it dries that it sits flat because I can kind of adjust the legs. Oh, not that one. That one's dry. That one a little bit. If I need to make an adjustment so that it sits flat. And that's pretty good. So here is this. I can also kind of pull them to the side a little bit if I need to make them look a little bit more even. I don't want one like leaning a certain way. So I'm just going to eyeball them and get those adjusted as quick as I can before the glue sets. So that kind of has like more of like a little retro effect because like retro furniture has more of the sleek leg style. It's still okay, but I really prefer the look of the chair banisters. So if you're able to find those or order those, um, those are really cool to use. All right, so we have this finished. We are actually ready to paint. And so um, like, uh, I don't know if you saw my last live stream, um, I'm going to go ahead and crackle this guy and that's by using, um, this folk art crackle medium. Um, but in order to crackle things, uh, what crackle means is that the top layer of paint is going to crack and come apart. Um, because I want this to look like a wood piece of furniture, it already is kind of brown, but not the kind of brown that I want it to be. I'm going to paint a layer of this color and this is chocolate brown. Um, this is just kind of the cheap acrylic paint that you can get at, um, this one's from Hobby Lobby, but you can also use the stuff from Walmart. Um, I'm not too worried usually when I'm using this kind of paint um, about the brand name. So I'm just going to pour some of that in here. And I got a brand new clean palette. Last week I had the messiest, or last month, I stream every month. Last month I had the messiest palette. No one could see what I was doing. So um, I got a brand new clean palette just for you guys so you can actually see what I am doing. So I'm going to get just a regular brush and start painting on this brown paint. I'm not really going to worry about down here because that's going to be covered up, but I do want to make sure I go all the way down the back. And um, I did want to tell you, you can do the plank look to the inside, but if you get too many cuts into the cardboard, it could kind of weaken the sides of um, your miniature. So I highly suggest that you do one side, but if you want to go for it, um, go for it. You could also possibly get two of these and cut the back off of one of them and just kind of insert it if you were afraid of that happening. Um, but that's up to you. That's kind of some extra work. These are supposed to be kind of fast and simple and easy to do. Um, so I kind of try and keep it simple. All right. So if you feel like your paint starts to fill in the cracks in between your, um, your planks, um, you can always go back with your tool and um, like go over the side, the, the plank marks again, if that makes sense. And I'll probably show that to you later because when I do the white on top, the white that's going to crackle, um, I will go over it again so that you can see those. So don't worry about that, but make just hopefully you can see it enough so that you know where your original marks were.
Hi, Joanne. <laughs> wow, 2 a.m. Man, I was complaining about me being tired. You must be exhausted. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know Aileen's flu would crackle pink. Okay, that's awesome. I will have to try and do that. I will test that out because that sounds like a good thing because crackle medium is not super cheap. And if you're out of it, it's annoying to have to go get some more. So I will definitely test that out. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to get paint all over my hands to match the glue all over my hands, which is... I'm also um, an art teacher. So the kids are like, you have paint on your hands. I'm like, I always have paint on my hands. It's paint on my clothes, paint on my hands, paint on the furniture. It's just paint everywhere. And so I go with it. It's just kind of my... It's my theme now. Paint everywhere. Okay, so I've got kind of a ugly base coat on here. I'm going to try... Oh, there's my water. I'm going to try and um, make it like blow dry it quickly. So I'm going to do that kind of away from the microphone so you don't have to listen to that. Hopefully that should kind of speed it up for us. So I'll be right back. Oops. Missed a spot. Darn it. Darn it. That always happens. I teach um, kindergarten through sixth grade, so that's fun. <laughs> kindergarten is fun, but we do a lot of, this is how you use a glue bottle, because I don't really believe in glue sticks, <laughs> as far as like holding art together. I mean, glue sticks have their place, obviously. Um, but we do a lot of how to hold the scissors, how to... Um, you know, just the basic things, like we did how to use a ruler, um, and you know, things that you don't realize that um, aren't, like your skills you're not born with, like the, the skill of like hold the ruler down while you're using the other hand to trace the line. So we do a lot of that in kindergarten, and then up through my sixth grade, we do all sorts of projects, and this year we're doing some photography, so it's really fun to um, have several years of students that you, you kind of see them grow and um, move forward in their artwork. So it's a really fun job. Okay, here we go. need to reposition my hands on the dried part so I can get the inside. Okay. Sorry, this is the boring part. Oh, good. I'm glad you like seeing it in real time. I'm always afraid <laughs> that it's going to seem so boring that I'm just blow drying paint. Like you're literally watching paint dry. I said that joke. Like I feel like that should be the tagline to my channel. Come join us. Watch paint dry. <laughs> so, okay. So yes, I, this is mostly dry except for a few little spots. 
Um, I'm just gonna get those off. Um, so now I'm going to use the crackle medium. And like I said, that is the folk art brand. And this, um, I've said before, is the only brand of crackle that I use. Um, it, um, the directions say that you put the base coat, whatever color you want to show through, um, and then the crackle medium, and then um, you put the top coat that you want to crack on top. Um, I've had some other friends use um, brands that you put the crackle medium on top and it hasn't worked out so well, at least not on miniature projects. It might work great on um, bigger projects. Also, um, if you want thinner cracks, so usually in miniatures you want thinner cracks, you want to use a thinner layer of crackle medium. If you want bigger cracks, then you want to use a thicker layer. So. Um, we're going to try and use a thin layer so we can get lots of cracks on this miniature. And last time I did this and used the hair dryer to dry it, um, that worked really well. So hopefully it will dry quickly. Use a different brush for this. Okay, so we're gonna use this crackle medium and I'm just gonna put it everywhere, except for on that bottom part we said we didn't need to worry about. And I don't know if it really matters, but I like to brush it in the direction of the wood grain. I know I do that definitely with the paint that goes on top, but I do it with the crackle too. Like I said, I don't know if it really makes a difference, but that's just, I try to do it that way. I feel like I, feel like, I like how my crackle turns out, so I just do it the same way each time. So I'm just gonna brush it on in the direction of the wood plank. Oh, and I just stuck this in paint. Pay attention. Okay, hopefully next month it won't be the day after Halloween. Well, next month it won't be the day after Halloween, will it? It will be the week after Thanksgiving or so. And we're going on a cruise, so I might be tired then too. <laughs> so that's okay. If you're a mom, you're just always tired. I think that's just, I think that's just the rule especially when you got a three-year-old. He's a crazy little kid. Okay, so I've brushed that on in the direction of the planks. Um, if I'm getting off camera, let me know. Um, now I'm just going to brush it on in the same direction inside, even though I don't have planks. I'm just, just going to pretend like I do. So I'll put those on. And I'm probably gonna need some more crackle. You think you put a lot in there, but it goes quickly. I'm trying to remind myself to do a thin layer. I don't know if y'all can see what I'm doing. But. Okay, so I've got the inside and the outside coated. I wanna make sure I get this top part here, top part of the opening. Okay, I'm gonna pour some more crackle to do the bottom. I'm not sure how I'm gonna hold this. I'm just gonna, there might be a spot on the bottom that doesn't have crackle, so I just don't get crackle. <laughs> crackle on top of the paint, on top of the glue, that's on my hand. Okay. Let me get the legs so that those get nice and crackly. Usually people don't look at the bottom anyway, and that's a lot of times when I sign things, I put my name there. So it's okay if one spot doesn't have all the crackle. Oops, just went over that. Okay. The trick is to get, to remember to get all the sides of the legs. Okay, get that brush in here. Okay, now I'm going to dry this layer and I think this should go pretty quickly.
that needs to dry just a little bit more. Um, but we're going to get to the cushion fairly quickly and we're doing like really, really good on time. Um, so I'm going to give you the fabric choices for the cushion and you guys can vote. Um, this is like one of my favorite fabrics and I ha like don't have much of it left anymore. So I'm like saving it and hoarding it. I don't know if anybody else does that. Um, so I have some other choices and I pulled them out. Okay, so this is what we're actually going to make the cushion out of. This is just um, like quilt batting. And I just get it in like the really long rolls and sheets. Um, so, um, yeah. And I just have like a ton of it, but it comes in handy for upholstering things in miniature because you can just layer it up. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to put, there's like green flowers. And remember, this is going to be like a white finish. Um, this is pink flowers. I have blue and brown swirlies and red polka dots. So um, y'all can vote on that. Which one you think you would like. So green flowers, pink flowers, blue, brown swirlies, and red polka dots. Do you like my description? Yes, Joanne, that's a good suggestion. <laughs> I That is a great suggestion, actually. I need to get some sticky labels with my brand because I hate writing my name. I always mess up writing it on there. So I like that suggestion. I'm going to get some stickers that I can just stick on the bottom of my miniatures. I like it. Okay, so why y'all think and vote on fabrics? I hope you can see them. I don't want to get them in my glue mess. Um, whoever gets the most votes, we will do. Let me finish drying this guy up. He's still just a little bit sticky. I think he is dry enough, except for that part. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna dab anything off. It's funny trying to do miniatures in real time because a lot of times I just like let it sit and I go do the dishes and let it dry and go do laundry and now I'm like, how can I speed this up? <laughs> okay, so I think we're, it looks like so far we're going with green flowers. So I think, I think that was the one I was liking too, so. Okay, so I, before I do this, I'm just going to run my little pokey stick guy over the edges again. Um, just because the paint is getting thick enough, I'm afraid if I do my white paint over it, I may not see them as well. So I'm just going to run them again over the edges, slow and steady, so I don't mess up. Because it's very easy to go and just make a big scratch across the back of your bench so I may still do that but for now I'm just going kind of slow make sure I get every single line Doo -doo -doo. I think that green flowers fabrics from my mother-in-law she makes quilts and so I get all her extra fabric because usually they're cut down into little bitty squares and it's hard for anyone to use them for anything else, but since I make miniatures, those little bitty bits are perfect for me. So she just 
she I come over and she sets down a big bag of fabric oops sorry and um, just like go through it and so I grab what I think I can use and it's great because she a lot of times has um, like very small prints that look really good in miniature so it is awesome okay so I have gone over all the edges again so you can still see them really well so I'm pretty um, confident that when I put that white layer on top I will still be able to see the definition between my planks all right so I told you I'm just doing white this time so I'm gonna get some white and um, I said this in the last video on the last stream and I'll say it again if you're not familiar with crackle this <laughs> this is the most important thing I can tell you you have one shot to lay that paint down because if you keep going over and over the paint you're gonna start messing up your crackles because it starts to crackle immediately so you have to lay down a thick coat of paint the first time in your first stroke so I'm going to attempt to do that now sometimes you can go back and fix it a little bit um, but I highly suggest that you lay down the best coat of paint you can the first time and then if you still kind of have some bald spots wait for it to dry go back and go over it and it may still crackle a little bit but if you're if you have wet paint and you're going over crackle over and over again it's just gonna kind of become mush so I'm gonna do my best to show you that situation here okay so I'm gonna pretty much load my paint up my brush up with this white paint and in one swoop I'm gonna try and get this whole thing covered in paint and it's easier on smaller projects like this bigger projects are a little bit more difficult so I'm just gonna try and lay that down and I'm not gonna go back over it because I'm gonna start messing up my cracks if I do that and I'm gonna I'm going in the direction of the um, wood what the wood grain would be if it was actually wood so if I get it super thick I can kind of if it's thick really thick it will give you a little bit more time to go back over it okay, can you see it's already cracking okay so sorry I don't I do have a hard time talking while I'm painting over crackle because I feel like I have to really focus on it. Okay, try not to touch it. Just go all the way around. Okay, so now see how fast it starts to crackle. So if I was going over and over that, um, I'd just start messing it up. So now I'm gonna try my best to hold it and I'm just gonna dab paint on the top like so I know I love watching crackle happen it's like magic it's miniature magic okay now did I do crackle on the inside yes I did okay you can always tell if there's crackle because it has like a shine um, but you know sometimes I doubt myself so I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside all the way down to the bottom to where our cushion will be try and show it to you while I'm doing it see if I'm that talented almost all the way around okay the nice thing about also doing crackle paint is that it dries pretty quickly because what the crackle is doing is drying out your paint like super fast that's how it's crackling it 
so it dries fairly quickly. Okay, that's too much paint. Okay, here we go. Do the front part. Okay, and then I'm going to dab again on the top. I can get paint on myself once again. It's okay, it's all for the sake of miniatures. Okay, so we got crackle all around, crackle on the inside. So now I just have the bottom. See if I can find my thumb hole from where I didn't do crackle before. All right. Now I'm gonna go up the legs, like I said, just in that same one stroke motion as fast as I can so that I don't mess up any crackles that start to happen. Is it crackles or cracks? Probably just cracks. Don't mess up any cracks. <laughs> okay, so you can see it's already starting to crack on the legs. And we're going to keep going. I probably shouldn't have painted the bottom feet because I need to set it down to dry, but that's okay. There's paint on my paint mat already. Okay, this, where it's these big long open spaces, this is where it's harder to do the one stroke painting. So, but it's the bottom, so I'm not super worried about it. Like I said, it's not the place where um, people always look. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to paint this other side. Okay. Just, keep, just keep swimming. Just keep painting. Just keep painting. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if the sides of this are dry enough. Put my paintbrush over here. Right, so thank you, Sarah. It's already coming together and kind of looking like an old bench, but we've got several more things we can do. I keep hitting my microphone, I'm sorry. Several more things we can do to age it up a little bit more. So let's see if I can hold it somewhere else. Test the paint. That seems dry, that seems dry. Nope, nope. Nope, it's not dry enough. So I'm gonna blast this with the hair dryer again and um, hopefully dry it up a little bit more so I can finish painting the bottom and hold it in other spots. Okay, there we go. I feel, oops, 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 people who call around looking under furniture, <laughs> yes, especially miniature furniture. <laughs> okay, so um, while it's still kind of tacky, um, I'm going to make sure and go back over my lines. So um, I am using um, the tooth, the dr dentist, <laughs> the dentist pick thing now it is a little bit sharper than I think I had before and it's going to scrape a little bit more paint out of there I am having a harder time finding those lines so I'm really glad that I went over them again um, when I did that layer of crackle so I'm just going through again and I'm making those lines very defined so that you know all that work that we did making it look like planks of wood isn't lost in the final 
So I'm just scraping all that paint out of those centers so you can see that it's starting to look like planks of wood. I do feel like I'm removing plaque from between teeth. Ew, that is kind of, <laughs> it's <laughs> like old crackled teeth. Blah, gross. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I shared that part of my brain. Okay. All right, get that in here. All right, so I have like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna try and not forget the front little pieces. And again, like I said, I'm not sure I did these, went over these again whenever I did the crackle. So I'm just gonna do my best to figure out where they were. And then get those pulled out. Okay. Oh, there's my dog. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do if... Shh, Audrey! Shh. Mm. Okay, the other thing you can do while it's still wet is um, you can kind of use the back of like a, a dull tool. There's a few places that are still wet and you can just kind of pull at that crackle paint and it'll look like it's um, coming off. Um, I should have done that before I dried it, but there's still a few wet places that I can kind of pull the paint off at and it'll kind of start aging those areas. Um, it'll look like the paint cracked and actually fell off. Ah, got a tickle. Okay, I'm just going to do that kind of all over. You can do that. Um, you can also kind of take the edge of like a sharp pick and just kind of go up and make kind of marks where like the wood fibers would have split apart. Um, so just kind of scrape it wherever you feel like. That's the fun part about aging things. Just scrape where you feel. And if you make a mistake or you pull off too much paint or you don't like how it looks, um, you can just paint over it. So now I'm just going to go along the edges here to make the edges look like they're worn because if this was a worn piece of furniture, sorry, my nose is just tickling me. Um, people would have brushed against this edge of the bench and um, also this edge. So I'm just going to try and pull some of that paint off because naturally that's where that paint would have been pulled off. Also around the edge of the bottom. Like so. And then along the tops, if you would like to. It looks like it dried a little bit too much. I could have done this before it dried, but it was just really hard to hold. So if you're not trying to show people what you're doing, it's easier to set it down, um, wait for it to dry, take your time, um, just um, wait for, and just like do it right when you paint it and then wait for the next section to paint and then age it. That's what I usually do. I paint a section, um, age it, and then move on. But I'm trying to do things quickly for you guys today. So we're not here all day. Okay, I'm also going to do a little bit of those things in the center here. This is going to be, this part right here is going to be one of the things that people are looking at because even though this is the front of the bench, they're going to be looking at the back unless you have a doll sitting in it. So I am just going to do a few of those lines and scratches um, to age up the back, like so. Okay, so here's kind of our aging on this guy. You can also do that to the legs a little bit, just wherever you feel like. Okay, so we've got that guy pretty much done. 
I'm going to, I forgot to grab this earlier, I'm going to grab my chalk pastels and um, we're going to do a little bit of aging with the chalk pastels before I do, oh, let me paint that guy. Let me paint him real quick or that's going to bother me. <laughs> Thank you, Arsis. Is that correct? Arsis? Arsis? I love that. Um, I appreciate that. I love the details and when you age things, it's so much easier to make details <laughs> than when you're trying, trying to make it perfect. I am not good at making things perfect, like brand new perfect. Not good. So <laughs> aging is my go-to. Okay, so let me grab my chalk pastels real quick and hopefully they're in a place that I can find. Okay, got chalk pastels. These are just probably student grade chalk pastels. And I'm going to get a small brush. It's best to get a brush that you don't really care about because if you use this brush over time with chalk pastels, they will kind of wear down your bristles. So, um, I'm using a small brush because I want to kind of age up these cracks. This isn't going to work. I used to have a brush that was very, very, very short. Yes, age do have more characters, uh, char characteristics. I agree. I love looking at aged miniatures. Um, there's so many things you can do if it's supposed to be old. Okay, I don't suggest doing this, but I'm doing this today. I'm going to cut up one of my brushes so it can be shorter, so it can work for me because I don't know where my other one is. So I'm going to cut it, the bristles off so that it's shorter, like so. Sorry for my hands. And that's going to be easier for me to control. I'm going to pick up some of this black chalk pastel and I'm just going to put it over the crack here where the paint is. And that's going to, again, bring more attention to the division between these planks. Okay, you can also use this like at the edges, anywhere you think that dirt would have built up. <laughs> yes, artists always covered in paint. Always, that's what I tell my students paint or marks from their pens or I used to always have doodles on my hand from just drawing on myself and I get in trouble for my father who I know is watching. See, I was just becoming an artist, dad. <laughs> All right. So I'm just kind of randomly putting in there. You don't have to do every single spot, but it does start to bring a little bit of age. Um, I might put some brown in there. Um, this usually I sit down and just kind of think through, take my time. Like I said, put on a movie. See, I can add some brown to the top of here. So it definitely makes it look a little bit more aged. I forgot to use my, I'm going to use my nails, just kind of punch the top of these um, in between. And that's going to make... Um, the top of the board kind of punch down and it's going to continue to make more definition in between these planks so it does look like individual planks of wood too. I'm glad I'm not the only one who got in trouble for that. It didn't permanently stain my skin, I promise. <laughs> I've had a lot more art supplies on me since then. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to punch all the way around the tops here so they look like individual planks. All right, and then I'm gonna put definitely some more color on the front here because this is where people would be getting up and sitting down. So dirt from their hands, their pants, would definitely be on the front of this piece of furniture, skin oils, all that kind of stuff kind of collects 
I always think it's fun to think through all that kind of stuff. If this was a real um, chair, what would it end up looking like if it was 50 years old? You know, what would its life have been? <laughs> Had to pay a tattoo artist a lot of money to do that permanently. Hey, I should have used that line if I was smart enough. Okay. Okay, so you can see I've kind of aged around the front here. So this is looking really old. Um, so it's definitely starting to look a little bit more like these. Someday I'll do a stream where I don't crackle stuff. <laughs> Show you that I can do other paint finishes, but this is just a really good finish to do on um, this, this project. So um, I'd usually do a little bit more of that. I am going to um, take a break for like a second and go wash my hands real quick before I start the um, fabric part because I just don't want all this to get stuck onto the fabric. I'm gonna let this guy dry a little bit. So I'll be right back um, and then we will start making the cushion for the bench. I'm gonna put my custom be right back sign. Oh, you can't see it anymore because I added the, the thing. Let's see if I can move it. I can. Okay. I will be right back after I wash my hands. Have cleanish, dryish hands, and I'm back. I'm also going to take a quick drink of tea because I'm in Texas and that's what we drink. Um, I know some of you were here at the last stream and you told me where you were from. Um, if you are new and you were not at the last stream, where are you from? I am from Texas, DFW area. And it is finally cold. Last stream it was so warm outside. Oh, this is product placement. I'm advertising for Dickie's Barbecue. Okay. Alrighty. I think um, Sarah said she would never thought to use these boxes for things. I think these were like one of the first things like I think I bought these boxes for something else and I didn't end up using them for like a gift or something and um, I just like one day I was like I bet you I could carve that into something and then it just happened and I've been buying them ever since. South Carolina. Oh, it must be really pretty there right now. It's not pretty in Texas when it just gets gross all the, the leaves fall like they don't even turn colors yet they just fall and we don't have like the pretty colors on the tree leaves or anything we have to go out of state for that okay um all right we decided on the green flower fabric and um have this guy so um, I'll usually use maybe three South Australia. Summer is coming. Yes, you guys kind of flip-flop from us. I remember that. I remember we had a student one year who was from Australia and she came back and um, I think it was Christmas and she was telling us how, how hot it was and 
just kind of, you know, geography blows my mind. Awesome. I wish I could see it. Our trees are just green and now they're going to be dead looking. <laughs> Which green is good. Green is good. But it would be nice to see those beautiful colors. Oh, okay. Let me explain what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to use the lid as just like a starting, um, what do you call it? Template. Um, this will get me like the general s shape. I'm starting to lose speech. Um, general shape and then I can kind of cut it down to fit. So I'm just going to kind of put it on the edge there and cut out my first layer. And it can be kind of hard to hold. So if you're having difficulties, you can, you see what I'm doing? You can trace around it. So that's what I'm going to do because say, or you can flip the lid over and then it's easier. Ha oh, ha, brain kicked in. It's kicking in now. <laughs> okay. Now it'll be easier to hold that I have it on the flat side. All right, so I'm just gonna cut around and get the general shape of this bench. And it's gonna be too big, but I can start cutting it down a little bit. So it's definitely too big. I'm gonna go ahead and cut maybe an eighth inch off all around and then I'm going to see how it fits in there. And there's still a little bit of wet paint in there, but that's okay. That is okay. Has anyone ever used this stuff before? Like I feel like when I found it, but of course I'm not a quilter. So if you've quilted or made any sewing projects, you're probably like, duh, I've seen that stuff a million times. But I found it and was like, this stuff is amazing. Houston, yep, that's where my parents live. Yeah, they said it was raining. <laughs> yeah, I when I first, I used to live up in Illinois for a good part of my childhood. So I'm going to have to cut off like another 16th inch for this guy to fit. Okay, so when part of my childhood I lived in um, near Chicago, like an hour away from Chicago, and it, whenever it rained, it was cold afterwards, at least for just a little bit, or it was cold while it rained. And then we moved to Texas, and <laughs> it was just shocking to me that it rained and um, it was still hot, and it was even more humid. And there was like no relief from the summer, even when it rained. It just like shocked me. And still to this day, I, I guess because we lived up there for so long, I feel like, oh, it rained. It should, you know, after the rain's gone, it should walk out. And you walk out and you're just like, oh, it's worse. How did this happen? <laughs> so, yes. Okay. So that guy fits in there pretty good. I want it to be fairly snug. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to copy this and make another layer that's the same size. So I'm just going to cut this off, make another layer. It's so exciting to see how many miniaturists are in Texas because when I first started doing miniatures, I felt very alone because it seemed like all my online miniature friends were in other countries. Like, um, there are a lot of them in England. I have a lot of miniature friends in England, um, some in Singapore, some in Australia. And it just felt like there was nobody that I met who was in Texas. And now um, I just meet people all the time that are miniaturists in Texas, even online. So I just think that's really cool. Okay, so I have two layers that are the same size and then I'm gonna make one that's just a little bit smaller so it kind of looks like the cushion's bumping up a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of make it look like the cushion is plump. So how am I gonna do that? I guess I'm just gonna make one that's the same size again and then I'm just gonna cut it down a little bit. That will be the easiest solution. Thank you. 
We're getting pretty close to being done with this. We might go all the way to noon. It was going quickly, pretty quickly. It's actually a pretty quick project. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut it down so that it can kind of look like a more plumper cushion. Just plumps it up in the middle. You can really use this stuff to kind of manipulate cushions to look the way you want, kind of sculpt them um, and make them different shapes. You can even like, if it's, well, I mean, this is supposed to look like an old miniature, but if you have like something you're upholstering, you can like cut out a piece and make it look like it dips down, like people have been sitting there for a long time. So um, you can really use this stuff to your advantage. So I'm going to put this in here like so, and it's popping up. I want to make sure that it's popping up over this edge so that when I upholster it, I can see the fabric coming up over the edge. I don't want it to be sunk down inside there. And I actually, I know this is not fun to watch me cut fabric. I'm going to do one more layer just to make sure that it's plump enough so that it looks like a comfy bench. This takes five seconds. One, two, three, four, no, a little longer than five seconds. Now I'm going to cut my finger trying to erase myself. Okay. All right, so I've got three layers and then this top little bump layer. I'm gonna clear this out of the way. And this stuff, I don't even know if you can see that stuff, but it's bothering me. All right, so I'm just going to use tacky glue just to kind of glue these together. It doesn't have to be exact because it's all going to be encased in the fabric. Come on. Wake up the tacky glue. I put it on its, I put it standing up straight. So of course now it won't come out. Okay. It's all gonna be held together by the fabric. This is just to keep it from moving while I'm trying to get the fabric on there. Try and line it up like a stack of pancakes. I am still eating low carb. I don't know if you're here last stream, but so anytime I mention pancakes, I think, mmm, pancakes. I've missed pancakes. Although someone gave me a new like low carb recipe that's like cream cheese and stuff. So I'm gonna try that because pancakes are good. Okay. So now I have this piece. I am going to make sure that my space is cleanish before I lay this um, fabric down and mess it all up before it's even on the bench. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this fabric down like so. Yep. With the correct side, the side I want to show down. And I'm going to put that down and I'm going to get a pen and trace around. I'm not going to try and hold it. So yes, no, or I, I just stick it on its side now. That's a little bit better. And I'm just going to, oh, there we go. Kind of trace about half inch around like so. I could have done it a little bit closer to the edge. Oops. But they love me. Okay. I'm going to cut that out with scissors. I try to conserve fabric, but every now and then I forget. And these are not my fabric scissors. I can't find them, of course. They say fabric on them, but they disappear and then they don't work when I get them back. So, but these are working pretty well. So, all right. Okay, so I have that piece and I'm going to start, I'm going to put glue all around the edge here. I don't wanna put glue in the middle because this is very thin fabric. And if I do that, I have the chance of the glue seeping through the fabric and it kind of, like you can tell. 
And so I just want to put the glue on the edge so that I know that the fabric will hold in place. Um, but also, um, if people touch the cushion, they'd be able to feel like the hard glue. So I just don't want to put any glue in the middle. So I'm just going to stick it around the edge because I'm actually going to be covering the edge with another piece anyway. So I'm not super worried about it. Go all the way around. Okay. So I'll make sure. Okay. So I'm put my side that I want to see down. I'm going to put this top part of the cushion down. Trying to get glue everywhere again. Just going to kind of push it. So while it's drying, I'm going to start cutting slits and I'm going to leave about a 16th inch. I'm going to cut and then leave about a 16th inch where it's not cut away from the padding. And this is because I don't want to see the cut when I start pushing these pieces down. That might make more sense later when I start doing it. So about a 16th inch away, I'm just going to make cuts all the way around because I'm going to try and fold this fabric down over the cushion. So do the people who are here from the other countries, do you celebrate Halloween? It was very interesting on YouTube to, to see there are a lot of people saying that they don't celebrate Halloween. And I mean, I wouldn't say that I necessarily celebrate Halloween, but we participate in the tradition and let the kids go trick or treating. And I remember doing that as a kid. And of course, it was a lot safer back then. I mean, even um, last night there was like someone shot somebody and it was like really close by. It was really scary and there were helicopters and things going on. So it's just like a different world, I feel like. And you can't just send your kids outside anymore. Ugh, scary. Okay, moving on. Now I'm going to put glue on the edges and just push the fabric down and I'm doing it very messily but like I said I'm going to be covering this part so it's okay I just want it to stick down really well and then all those little flaps that I just cut I'm going to slowly go around and just push them into the glue I wish I could play some music in the background, but I don't know if it's copyrighted and I don't want to be in trouble. Do you even have one copyright thing and they say you can't stream? So is it really worth it? I don't know. Is it too boring without music? Would it be better with music? These are things I ask myself and I ask you guys. Okay, I just think it would fill the gaps when like I'm not talking because I feel like I have to talk the whole time. <laughs> That's just me. Even in like social situations, I'm like, no one's talking. I have to say something. Okay, and then usually it comes out awkward. Oh, well. All right, so I have all these pieces pushed down on the side. And I am going to cut the edge so that it's flat all the way around because this is the bottom of my cushion, which we're not going to see. This is the side we're going to glue down to the bench. So I, yeah, if we see that part, it's okay. It doesn't need to be covered. So I'm just going to go around and cut the edges off. So um, you could just put this piece into the bench. We can just kind of practice, see how it looks. You could just put it in that way. 
um, or you could also add an edge to the pillow which um, might make it a little squishier in there but um, I think I'm going to add an edge just because I really don't like seeing the clipped edges. I think that's kind of like a detail thing in my mind. So I'm going to show you how to just make an edge. I think we'll just make an edge. No, we'll make one that goes all the way around. We can do that. We can do that. We have time. So I am going to cut a long piece, probably about, mm, I don't know, a little less than an inch wide. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. A little less than an inch wide. And that piece is going to be folded in half. And it's going to become, I think it's called a bias, is in sewing terms, where it's like the edge of something. Could be wrong. I need to ask my mother-in-law what she would call this. Okay, so I'm just going to take a line of glue down the edge on one side. And then I'm going to fold it over. And probably the best thing to do once you have it folded over is to iron it because then you would know that that crease is stuck in there and um, it's not going to move or come out because um, that would help. And I have a mini iron. I just have not taken it out of the package yet. I should have. I didn't think about it for today. Um, but there you go. There's kind of the edge of our cushion. And you're not going to see this bottom part, so I'm not, like I said, I'm not worried about that. The part you're going to see is this top folded over part. And what I'm going to do, hopefully this goes around the whole cushion. Do, 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 do. Yep, it does. So I'm going to pick which side is going to be my front. And I don't think it really matters. They're both looking about the same. I'm going to start gluing it around the edge like so. And so it looks like you have a finished cushion on top, which since we only have the top, well, that's okay if that's all that we see. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue. I'm gonna try not to get glue on this top lip part. It's kind of an important. So you don't wanna, you wanna try and hide your glue as much as you can. Just general rule of miniatures, hide your glue. Hide your glue lines. Okay, so now I'm gonna start sticking it on from the back. Pull it forward all the way around. Thank you, Mariah, I'm glad it is. <laughs> I'm glad you don't notice that I'm like, <gasps> doing this correctly? Am I doing it in the right order? <laughs> Sometimes I can be a bit of a perfectionist and so I panic whenever I'm trying to tell people how I do things and I don't feel like I'm doing a good job but I'm glad that you find it relaxing. It makes me feel better <laughs> that I'm doing a good job. Okay so here we have the top part of the cushion and I'm just going to cut it off at the back and try and kind of make it go as seamless as possible into each other. Make sure I put a good line of glue. This is at the back, so if there's glue on top here, like I said, it's okay. No one will see that. Just going to get that together. Okay. And then... I'm going to cut, just like we did before, any of the extra off. And it's a good idea to let it dry first before you do this, but I'm not going to do that. Because the scissor can sometimes make the um, fabric kind of come up or come away from where you originally put it if the glue is not completely dry. So I'm not following my own good idea. I'm just going to cut it off and hope that it stays in place. Oops. Yeah, it pretty much stayed in place. Okay. So now I have a cushion. I'm going to make sure that it fits in there. And um, yeah, fits in there pretty well. You can leave it unglued if you'd like to. 
um, so that you can like change it out or I mean I guess I guess you could change it out if you had like different scenes you thought you might want to put it in they're super easy cushions to make so um, but I usually just glue mine in because once I make a miniature I usually don't go back and do anything else to it so this is how the cushion looks super squishy kind of looks comfy like I would go like read a book there I think um, and you can age that cushion if you like or you can just leave it as is. I'm going to go ahead and glue it in and just because that's how I do. Let me get glue all on there and put it in there carefully. Try not to slime glue. I guess you could have put glue in the bottom. I could have put glue in the bottom and then I wouldn't have to worry about that. That would have made more sense, but that's fine. So there we go, all glued in. Um, you can age the cushion the same way with the pastels. You could put a little bit of paint, especially if it's an outdoor scene. Um, you could have it look like um, there were specks of where the rain had come down and brought down some dirt. Um, this could also be a really cute um, dog bed where um, you know it could just sit on the floor. You could even cut the top off um, make just like a cute little dog bed for like a, well in this scale probably a pretty large dog. Um, but yeah, it's very versatile. If you decide to make one of these, I'd love to see what you come up with. They're so easy to carve. You could even maybe carve some details into the back, um, make it a little bit more ornate. Um, hi Jenny, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. I see you just subscribed. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah. Um, let me know what you come up with. This is really as much as I have um, done with these, these benches, um, these kinds of chairs. And like I said, I prefer to do the legs with the stair ballasts, um, but these seem to work too. I mean, I, some people pay attention to the legs of chairs, but it's up to you. And then, you know, little boxes. And I used to have tabletops and I just use the same legs and I put the legs on um, these tabletops and I had like a little table set with these chairs and it was really cool because they could push into each other like so and um, so they became very compact inside the dollhouse um, kind of like a beachy scene and then these chairs could sit next to the tables and it had like a little um, bit of orange juice pitcher with glasses and it just looked like a nice outside um, beach house scene. So they're very versatile. Like I said, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to post this video on Friday, this Friday. So if there's anything you want to go back and um, see me do again, um, you can do that. Or if you have any um, continuing questions, if you're trying to do the project, you can post them on those videos and on that video on Friday and I will respond to it. So um, I think that's it. We're done about 20 minutes early. I think I'll use that time to clean up all the random Halloween costume bits that are still all over my studio. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I love when I can interact with people. That makes creating um, so much more fun. Uh, to in, to get to know you guys and I'm really excited as my channel grows um, to know you and to know projects that you're working on and just to hear about what you're doing so thank you again and um, I will see you guys next time oh I will tell you next next time what the day will be it will be Wednesday December 6th and I will put another YouTube event so that um, you can know that. And um, hopefully you will join me again on December 6th. You guys have a fantastic week and a fantastic November. Bye.